Greetings, Mark Boswell, Boswell Emergency Medical Education Technology, coming at you live this evening. Well, not necessarily live, because you may watch this after it's recorded, but I am live right now. And um, hey, I want to do a quick little video to talk about the um, mo one of the most recent practice questions I put online, um, because uh, I got a few questions about it as far as trying to explain the rationale and the understanding for it. And I thought there's some good points to it to help you all learn from as well, too. So um, how y'all doing? Let's get to it. So I'm going to look at my other screen here and read the question to you. So the question was actually practice question 870. And the question reads, a patient presents for care complaining of chest pain. Which of the following must be performed to be in compliance with the requirements of the EMTALA, that's Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, mandated medical screening exam? Your choices were A, an assessment by an MD, NP, or PA, choice B, vital signs, choice C, a troponin level, or choice D, an EKG. So the actual correct answer was an EKG. So let's talk about the other answers and what makes this one right and the other one's not right. So this is a good test question as far as it's an example of there may be more than one right answer to a question, but there's one best answer, okay? Um, so let's back up a little bit to about what EMTALA is. So EMTALA is a regulatory guideline that says all patients presenting for care or in active labor to a hospital or an emergency department must undergo a medical screening exam to assess for the presence of any life-threatening and medical emergency or um, uh, the immediate the immediate the immediate presence of labor and then we're going to have a baby um, or loss of life or limb so let's look at these answers i'm going to again look at my screen here for a second to read them off to you so answer a does this person need to have an assessment by an MD, an NP, or a PA? Well, actually, no. Well, EMTALA does say they need to have a medical screening exam performed under the auspices of a provider. There are actually some facilities that under a set of protocols and an approval process by medical staff, an RN, a registered nurse, can do this medical screening exam. Now, this is not a majority of places that are out there, but it is some places. And to do this, you have to have a policy in place and medical and as well as hospital leadership have to be behind that. But that is accepted as part of a possible EMTALA requirement. So technically the answer A is not the right answer for that reason. Also answer A is not correct because just an assessment, just a physical assessment, either taking a history, both the subjective, the objective, and the physical exam of this patient is not enough to rule out an immediate life threat. There needs to be some diagnostics done to rule out those immediate life threats. So A, while A is a good answer, A is not the best answer. Let's look at the next one. Next one is vital signs, okay? Yes, we do vital signs as part of triage, and we do them all the time on everybody. However, vital signs in and of by themselves are not enough to determine if there is an emergency medical condition existing for this patient. Well, now obviously they come in with no pulse, that would be an emergency condition, and that's all you really need to know because you'd start CPR basically, but that is not what's in the question. It actually states, and this is another good testing point for you guys, you cannot answer these questions for this exam unless it's referenced in the stem of the question. The stem of the question only states, a patient presents complaining of chest pain. That's all you got. So obviously they're, they're awake, alert, they're talking, they're having chest pain. Vital signs alone will not clue you into a life threat associated with their chest pain. Let's look at the next one. Answer C is a troponin level. Yes, we do troponins on a lot of our chest pain presentations. However, is troponin, troponin is sensitive for an acute MI, but is it specific? Or I should say that the way around. It is, it is specific for an acute MI, myocardial infarction, but is it, is it sensitive? Um, there are many things that can make troponin go up. Uh, we talk about this in the CE interview class. Even some of our renal patients or some of our congestive heart failure patients or patients with severe cardiomyopathy, they can have elevated troponins also. So the presence of doing a troponin or the presence of an elevated troponin by itself is not exclusive to diagnosing an acute emergent cardiac emergency. And let's face it, it's not something we can do usually within the first five or 10 minutes of patient care. Some of you guys are still doing them in the lab and it takes a period of time to do them. So troponin in and of by itself, it's a good answer, but is it the best answer? No. So answer D, which I told you is the right answer, is doing an EKG. So yes, this would be the best answer because an EKG is very sensitive for an acute STEMI, 
Now, of course, as a friend of mine posted, uh, he asked about um, a non STEMI, and that's fine, but a non STEMI is not the same significance as a true STEMI. And we don't go chasing zebras down with these test questions. I talk about this in the class frequently. We don't chase zebras in the desert, okay? Uh, non STEMI is a, is much less, it's not a majority of cases of acute chest pain presenting as a STEMI, nor is a right side MI. Uh, we talk about this in class. Right side MI is right ventricle or only about a uh, 30% of the time as far as if the inferior uh, segment's involved too. So that's several reasons why there's, you know, all these are good answers and all these are things we typically do as part of the medical screening exam. However, what's the best answer? The best answer that's most useful that should be able to readily identify an acute STEMI ST elevation, MI, or other cardiac emergency would be an EKG. So that's why that's when you're, that's why that's your best answer for this um, test question. So I hope that helps a little bit of explanation there. Um, again, after years of taking this test multiple times, networking with and talking to the people that actually help author the test um, and submit test questions, understanding their philosophy and what we're asking and what they're asking about on the exam. Um, I think this should help you understand this question. You know, so some of the take home points, so not so much the specific Hang on, I got, I got to throw the ball for the cat. Hold on. Not so much the specific information on the on the question I put up for you, but what's the teaching points? Again, there can always be multiple good answers, but there's only one best answer, okay? Um, that's actually one reason why teaching about these um, board exams is not that hard because in the world of exam taking, with looking for that best answer, it's kind of easy. And we contrast that or compare that with what we do day to day, taking care of patients is very dynamic and it's multimodal all the time. Um, so that's, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, feel free to post me questions or comments if you want about that. I'll be happy to, happy to reply to them or explain further if I need to. Um, but I hope that helps. And I saw several people had um, the wrong answer or I had a few questions about why um, the EKG was the best answer. So I hope that helps. Hey, you guys stay safe. Um, we're still under um, coronavirus precautions, um, you know, uh, social distancing, whatever, self-quarantining when we're not at, uh, at work or whatever. So I hope you guys are staying safe. Um, my thoughts and prayers are with all y'all. Um, feel free to share, comment, like, whatever. Um, send me some um, some vibes, some love this way. And um, I'll return it to you guys. Even if I don't, ver don't do it verbally, y'all are in my mind all the time. And I appreciate you guys following the page. All right. Y'all stay safe. I'm going to go get some dinner.